Okay, so it's been a little while. The glue on this is definitely dry. I've got these little needle files that I will uh, use to just get them flush. It's going to scuff the surface of the binding a little bit, but that's okay. Because it's a little bit oversized anyways, I believe. And mostly because we want to get these flush and then I'll polish the binding a little bit. But the idea is to get it completely well and truly flush first. Try to. got the next task I think I'm going to do, I believe I will do now, is uh, work out the deepening of these slots. And I wonder if this vise can handle what I'm about to do. I think I need to put in some pivot jaws on this, but we're going to try grabbing a hold of this. And yeah, there's enough flex there and it's holding. Okay. So we got this new saw. So this little guy kind of a cute saw, I got it on eBay, it is a uh, half a millimeter thick, you can see 0.5 millimeter. It's, um, that puts it about just under 20 thou, like 19.6 thou. And it's got the two blades on either side. These are for push and these are for pull, just like a Japanese saw. So we could, we could sit in here and just pull. It's really grabby. So I think I need to get a better approach angle here first. There we go. It's very sharp, I will say that much. It's pretty sharp and grabby. So the first thing I need to do though is once I, now that I see I can use this, I can get in here and just uh, very gently Push. I'm trying not to hit that binding in a bad way, if we can help it. I may, not sure I'm comfortable with the push style. I think I like the pull better, so I think we'll stick with pulling. All right, so I took this uh, spring steel, piece of spring steel that's got a little black anodized finish to it. And uh, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but I scribed a line on it with some scrap, uh, fret wire here. I just held it up like that. And it's radius, I know, but I'm it's not it doesn't need to be super precise. And I took it towards kind of this flatter end down here anyway. And I scribed a line to mark sort of the length of the tang. That's the max depth I need for the fret. That's as much room as I need in the slot. So then I'll just take this little guy and I'll just check it each time I send it on down in there and it's got a ways to go yet down there. It's right on in the middle, which I expected. And uh, we'll just gently grab a little and pull. And just gradually deepen this slot. It's definitely aggressive. It's more aggressive than I expected it to be. All right, so it's, I'm at the point of, um, I'm kind of taking a break from the fretboard because at the moment it's in a really good position to get put on the neck. So once it's on the neck, I'll be able to hold it a little bit better to clean out the fret slots and put the fret wire in. I don't want to put the fret wire in until it's on the neck. Um, but in order to get it on the neck, I need to shape the neck. In order to shape the neck, I need to put the truss rod in. Truss rod in. <laughs> the trust rod, you trust it. Um, so instead of messing up my perfectly good mahogany neck blank, trying to route, route the slot for this, there's a challenge. The routing the slot in the middle of the fretboard or in the middle of the neck blank isn't going to be that tough. That I can do. I'll use a 
template that's eighth, use, uh, that's a little oversized, use an eighth of an inch router bit, cut the slot, no problem. However, and I'm not sure how well it is, how easy it is for you to see, but the front wire, the, here's the neck end. This is where the nut will be. This is where the headstock basically starts. So first, let me back up. Here's the shape, right? This is my my uh, neck profile shape. And that matches this now. Um, this is a little block of maple scrap that I'm going to use as my test so I don't mess up my piece of mahogany, nice piece of mahogany. This is a facsimile of, you know, from about the fourth fret up on the neck. Um, narrow little headstock. But the idea is, and maybe I can show you this, the, um, the truss rod sits in the neck so right here is where the nut will be right this little this little kink in the neck where the head stock starts the truss rod sort of ends right around in that area just under the nut maybe back just a tiny little bit i'm gonna try to hold this so that it is oriented quite properly so if you can see here with it up near the where the fretboard is going to go the the adjustment head has to sit inside the headstock and there needs to be a way to get at it. Now, in this particular model, the way Gibson used to do it, one, they used a single direction uh, truss rod. I went, I've, I'm going with an upgraded idea of a, of a bi-directional truss rod because I like how they work um, and I don't think it's a big departure from the original. It's not gonna affect the sound, it's more gonna affect the operability and the tunability of it so I'm gonna stick with this but so the trick is this little thing has to go into a hole because on the original the truss rod ends and the headstock has a cover that goes over the top of this access point that cover has two screws one on the top and one on the bottom that bottom screw goes goes in right about here right about in this area where there's very little meat and if you just route a slot all the way through, then there's no meat and the screw can't go in. You have to glue a block in. And I don't like the idea of gluing a block in. So what I want to do, and the way Gibson did, is they drilled a hole parallel to the axis of the truss rod. I'm going to try to hold onto this a bit better. They drilled a hole in the headstock about this far back through to the truss rod, parallel to the truss rod, so that it gave you an access hole. And then the plate that covers it literally just covers that slot and there's a spot. There's still wood left right in here for a short screw to go into to hold that plate on. So we're going to try to do the same thing. And in order to try to do the same thing, I want to be sure that I don't mess up my piece of mahogany, which is why I have this little chunk of uh, scrap maple. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a jig to hold a drilling pilot, a drilling guide, so that I can take this nice long quarter inch uh, lamp drill, they call them usually, or just this really long quarter inch drill bit, and drill in right here to cut away and make a hole for that. It'll go in about, I'll go in, so the, the key though is that you're gonna have a slot running through here, so there'll be a slot through the center right here that ends right around in this area that's where the truss rod will stop it'll live in there like about like this buried down okay then there's still some wood here and you want that to stay so that the caps screw has something to go into but you still got to be able to get this inside underneath down below so what i need is a hole positioned so that where it's i have to start drilling from outside from out here i can't drill from this direction that would be nice so you have to drill this direction and make sure that that hole, that this big old drill bit comes out right in line with the bottom of the slot. So it's got to, uh, here let me, it has to come in right around in this vicinity because that's about where the truss rods access hole or access the nut has to go. So you see we've got to come way back here in order to stay parallel with that axis. Does that make sense? Here, let me, let me make sure I'm raised up right. Yeah, so that's, that's what we were 
what I'm trying to do. And I'm thinking the way I saw it on some of the Gibsons is they don't actually just drill the hole. They route out a little pocket a little bit deeper than necessary so that it creates kind of a vertical wall right around in this area. That vertical wall then is what you drill into so you actually don't have to come back here to start drilling. You've got a nice little flat spot. You can come to about here and then only have to drill, you know, three quarters of an inch and get it aimed just right so that it, it pokes through, you know, it pokes through right in line with the bottom of the fret slot or of the, of the truss rod slot. So what I'm going to try is making up a pattern. I'm going to need a, a, I'm going to need a routing pattern to put the slot in anyway that's centered on the neck. And so that pattern is the ideal thing to also use to make the little pocket down here so that I can um, route out that little pocket, then drill the center hole. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm going to do, so I'm going to take probably some quarter inch material because I want to use an eighth of an inch, a one eighth inch router bit, which is, needs all the length I can give it to get down in there. I'd use a quarter inch one, but this, width is less than a quarter inch, it's 225, 223, something like that. So I want to make sure it's a snug fit, that these two blocks are snug, we don't want any vibration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up a quick little uh, template that I'll clamp to this and use for routing out this section, and then I'll keep it clamped. I may have to find a wedge or something to put under here to clamp on this side or something. I'll figure out a way to hold it on this side. Uh, that one we can probably do with a quarter inch bit, actually. Yeah, we might be able to do that with a quarter inch bit. Because I need to get a bit deeper. I need to go longer than I don't think I can reach with the eighth inch bit. And we'll come over here with the eighth inch bit, and there'll be a, I'll make the pattern long enough to be the whole neck template. Basically, it'll be this length. I'm not going to try to you know, wedge this thing down inside there to get it to go seated. I'll, I'll route it a little bit long because this thing, as you can see, if it's going to sit buried in the neck about here, there's a good bit of room down on this end. And Gibson actually routes all the way through and then they fill in this area with a block. And I maybe, maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure. Not convinced I want to do it that way. But basically the idea is you got to have a way to get the damn thing in there so that's what we will be attempting yeah so I'll bring you back once I have worked out what my template and my pattern is going to look like all right uh, I sort of uh, skipped ahead a little I here I didn't film all of it but I made a pattern on the CNC it's the little notch I want to cut out that'll give me a square face to drill against and there's a slot here it's a lot longer than this test board is which will mean I'll have an easier time of getting it, ensuring it's centered. But this is at least going to help prove that I've got it uh, aligned with the axis. I've got a uh, eighth inch uh, spiral router bit in the router with a three three eighths guide bushing, and right now it's at zero. It's set with zero depth, but uh, we'll use that to kind of cut in and make our little trough and our slot. We're going to just do a tiny, a short slot here just to ensure that it's the right width that I need for that truss rod. Um, and then I can adjust this template. I'm probably, I may have to cut a second template. We'll see. Hope not, but we'll find out. So got my hearing protection, got my router set up. I'm ready to attempt. This actually may be smacking into my clamp. I'm going to move my clamp just a little bit here. Hold on one sec. There. That ensures I won't be hitting the clamp at all. Yeah. Don't think I was, but wanted to be safe. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, that's interesting that my corners are cutting weirdly, but all right, this must have been tool deflection or something. Okay, we're going to cut this. Okay, we're shooting for 440. 
We've got 420 so far, so we only need another 20 thou. Now I'm going to try as best I can to ensure that we only put a 20 thou rise here. So we're going to find zero on our bit here. Zero that. And then we're going to try as best we possibly can to only drop 20 thou. Let's check it now. It looks like 10. Let's try there. Now we're 27, so too high. Let's go up a little. That says 10. I'm going to try that again here. It says 8. Got to make sure my measurement process is a sound one here. Got to make sure I keep the base of the machine of the the caliber flat on this guide bushing. Then I can come down. That one says 16. We're going to try that. We'll see how it does. We may overshoot this. I'm not sure. Hopefully not. We're shooting for 440, but if it's a little deeper, that's not a huge problem. All right. I think we went in a little ways. We'll find out though. Okay, we can go back to re-zero here. We're at four. Oh, I would say 433. So that's about five or six thou low. We're going to go a little bit more then. I know we took deeper that time, so let's uh, let's re-zero. That's back on zero still. 445. We went a little bit high. Four forty five is the best I can get. So we went a little lower than we should have, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And I think the truss rod hole access is going to be all right there, I think. I actually feel like I could push that about, about a bit farther forward. I'm going to pull the pattern off here. You can see what we've got. If we take a quarter inch drill bit here, and we just set it in. All we got to do is find zero, find center, and it'll, it'll find its way right into that spot. So. I think we're good there. But so there's a little channel for me to reach in with the truss rod adjuster. Put the cap on. There's a place for the screw for the cap because the nut's going to go right here. Yeah, that's going to come back this way some anyway. The nut will go across right here. Right in that little shadowy line you can see there. That's where the nut would be. And then, yeah, that I think will be fine. So if we put the give you kind of a view here. This will stop likely about there-ish. And then of course the this will be, you know, sticking through just a little bit. I think that's all right. I think that's going to do just fine. Okay, so the only other piece that's kind of a variable is whether I can rate if I can and I'm pretty sure I can if I can hit that mark where I need to. I'm going to try to carry the center line down into this slot and I need some way and I think I think I'm going to use my depth gauge and 
kind of a semi-square. I think it's the only thing small enough I can get in there and use to mark this line best. Yeah, it is. Okay, but it'll work. All right, so we're going to set that down a little further and use this to carry my center line down into the slot. That's good. Then I just have to figure out my depth, which isn't going to be a big deal because all I really need to do is leave it on the bottom here and it'll find its it'll find its way. Yeah, okay, so we're going to stick this in the drill and see if I can't get it to come through. We'll find out now, huh? Look at that! Went right into it. That found it perfectly, and it seems to be just perfectly on the bottom of this hole, too. I can most definitely live with that. I've got about three sixteenths of an inch of wood thickness there. I think, what I think, what do I think? What does I think? I believe that if I were to, um, if I were to let this come back a bit further, I wonder if that's, if I leave a little more meat there, if that'll be a problem. No, it will be a problem because of the top of the hole. Okay. I think we're as close as we're going to get then. I'm going to grab the, the cover, the truss rod cover plate here and give it a peek. So it goes right there. It's literally going to bump against the nut and barely screw. Okay, it's going to be all right. Plenty of coverage then, I think. That's okay. I'm good with this. I like it. I do. I actually do like it. I'm surprised I like it. But I do. I dig it. All right. That covers my main concern there. Now, let's check that pattern one last time for one more thing. Where did I put the pattern? Ah, right there. Is length. I think for length we have enough. Yes, we do. We're going to... We've got an extra quarter of an inch to play around with. So we're going to make a pretty good size, good size slot there. Cool. I'm going to call that good. And uh, let's route the neck. That's the next piece. Let's make the neck do the same dang thing, right? Why the hell not? Now we can slide the pattern on. And I'm not going to be too upset to get right up against that thing. There's my centers. All of my centers line up. That's great. That is beautiful. All right. Now I can put a clamp on it right here and a clamp out here. That actually gets me very close to being out on the very end. I'm going to have to, I think, move the clamp down here once in a while, though, because my base plate's going to hit that. I could have made this a bit longer, I guess. I should have made this a bit longer, I guess. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Got to move it that way just a tiny bit. Okay. And then we'll grab this side. Let's see. How are we? We're we good. Yeah, I like it better on the end, but I don't mind, I don't quite like that. What I might do, nah, it's just going to shove it around is all. Okay, I like this. That's holding down enough. Not really, not holding it down at all. Okay, we're going to need to Let's see if that'll work. Pretty sure it will. Find out in a moment. Okay. Yep, that's it. Make sure we are centered. There. That's 
pretty well on there. Don't think it's going to go far. Should have made this longer. Next time, I'm going to leave myself four or five inches out that way. Yeah, I think we are ready to attempt this. I need to uh, need to reset my truss rod depth here because this depth all at once is no bueno for a eighth inch router bit. Um, yeah, that's going to be all right. I think we're ready to do this. I'm a little scared because now we're in the for real wood, right? But uh, I think it's going to be okay. So let's raise that bit up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was ten, I don't know, swipes with the thing. I doubt it'll matter really. Um, this is a fairly big bite yet. Yeah, I'm not in there yet. I need to be very careful where I start from because it's got to be in there. 10, 11, 12. I'm going to go with a very barely sniping it because I know this is actually hitting it. But I've got my, uh, I am in, just barely in, but I am in place, which is good. So, okay, I think we're, uh, we're going to route ourselves the next slot, shall we? Let's mess up a guitar, shall we? Here we go. I made a... making a judgment call here. I'm changing this up a little bit. Instead of switching clamps around, since this end is getting turned into a tenon anyways, I'm just going to nail this down onto the board, onto the tail, to, onto the neck itself with just a tiny little nail, which should be plenty to keep it where it needs to be while it uh, gets routed. Then I can just do this with just the one clamp on the far end. If I can just get this, I'm going to move this down to this end so I can keep some really good uh, vice clamping pressure and some hammering rigidity involved yeah I think that's gonna work fine because this is all gonna get cut away anyhow just put a that'll hold it now I can route the whole slot without having to worry all right I like that so now we'll improving the processes as we go here yeah that'll hold Hell, I could nail across along the length if I was really concerned. I think I will grab a couple more. Because the fretboard will cover up those nail holes. Yeah, we're going to do that. This will be a lot easier on me. I'll just nail it down is all. Just put a nail on either side here. These are little short nails too. They won't, they won't make any problems for anybody. Okay, I'll just make sure they're down far enough that I don't run into them. And then I could even do it right up here and not have to hold it at all with a clamp. Why don't I do that? Let me think about for that, that for a second. Should I not do that? I can't. I cannot fathom a reason not to, and therefore I'm going to. Yeah, just right up against this area right here, no problem. You'll never even know it was there. Yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with this. I actually like this because now I'm not at all beholden to these clamps. They aren't an issue anymore. Okay, that clamp can go now. Cool, I like it. Improving processes as we go. Now, let's find out. We'll find out at the end of this game if I uh, end up regretting that, but I don't think I'm gonna. I think that's perfect. All right, back to work uh, routing.
Okay, so that I think went really well. I think I went a little deeper than I should have gone. Yeah, it's, t it's probably a, about five or six thou, six or seven thou too deep, but I am unconcerned by that. And we'll just pop this up here. Just need to, uh, there we go. These nails are not sturdy, which is great because it lets me, uh, lets me uh, pop them out pretty easy. And we did not destroy anything, and our truss rod slots are all centered. The other trick will be it fits. Oop, it's a little shallow. Interesting. It's a little. Oh, there's stuff in it. That's why. Hang on. We'll troll that again. Yeah, it's just barely below the surface. That's great. So this side. I'm going to have to route just a little bigger to get this through, but uh, that's not going to be a problem. I'll just take that with a chisel after I've drilled the hole. And I think, don't dare say it out loud just yet, but I think we're ready to do this. Right there. And then we'll put our depth gauge guy here. Just like that. Yep. And then we take our drill bit. Boy, I might just have me a finished up neck part here. This will be nice. Okay. Try to keep it as low as I can. There you go. No looking back now, is there? And we're through. And looks like we're uh, through in just the right spots. Let's blow that out a little bit. Look at that tunnel. That tunnel looks very closely where, like it's where it belongs. Very closely. And that fits through there. Sweet. So wheat, and there's enough meat there for the plate to. Yeah, all I got to do now is work out just exactly where you're going to land, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of a slot right there, a little bit bigger. I'm wondering how I might pull that off. I have a five sixteenths collar. That's going to put a sixteenth on either side. No, it'll put an extra 32nd on either side. That may work. I might pop this back on. Hey, there's another reason to use the nails. So you can put this right back where it was and uh, widen the slots or reroute or do whatever you got to do. I like this idea. Nails are a cool thing. Are we in those holes? We are in those holes. We need to be in that hole. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to throw that other collar on this thing. I'd like to leave that depth, so if I can get that collar off without touching that depth, that would be fan frickin' tastic. Yes, I can. Okay, so we're going to switch this collar out to a slightly bigger or slightly smaller one, and I'll just by hand route that out. Okay, so I've put a clamp on here to act as a stop so I only go this far. I don't want to move very far. I don't want to go the whole width. I'm just making room. And I've got it on there so I check that it's pretty much as square as I think it'll need to be. Um, and I've left the depth alone. I've just put a different collar in. I just left the depth on the router exactly the same. So we're going to put a little, uh, put a little hearing protection on and we're just going to cut a little bit deeper on those edges. That was pretty much it. Yeah, that's beautiful, I think. That's going to work out well. 
I thinks I thinks. We're going to pop this clamp off here. I'll bet our truss rod drops in nicely now. It do. Check that out. And it's a little bit snug here, so that's good. We'll pop this, let's pop this off of here. Now, the ultimate thing is going to be whether or not I can push it through that hole. If I need to. I don't know if I need to, but yes, I can. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so we can move that wherever we need to. I'm going to drop that hole a bit, though, because right now this thing is just barely underneath the surface. So I'm going to pop this thing out. I'm going to grab a, a small chisel and just add a little bit of depth to that real quick. And I just need it a tiny bit deeper, and I need that hole, the bottom of that hole, just a tiny bit lower. So we can just come at this bevel down and uh, just add a little bit of, just a tiny bit, the slightest little bit of depth to this. I'm going to go back here just a ways to add just a little depth to this portion. And that's just going to be a little bit rough. Let's see if I can pair that. There we go. So if I were really crafty, I'd pull out the router plane maybe. But I'm not crafty today. There. And I think, I think that's going to give me enough depth at least at the block area because there's a block down there and it's a little thicker than i'd measured the first time so <sighs> and the, the first one i had measured they're not identical and pairing worked well this mahogany is some amazing stuff to work <sighs> okay and i'm going to come at it from this side too just to make sure got a little bit of room there and i'm going to ease the bottom of this hole a little so that it can fall down inside of it. Okay, let's get that clear. That worked frighteningly well, I must say. Scary well. Okay, let's, uh, let's put that bugger back in there. Yep, that dropped low enough. That's good. And it'll... Eh, we might need to drop the whole area just a little bit more here. Yeah. There it goes. So we could have the access a little bit further up, but I'm going to need to lower some of that again. Okay. Okay, I'm going to lower it just a little bit more from this side here. And it's just kind of coming down to the the access hole that I drilled, the quarter inch hole, is too snug. It fits too well there. So I'm just coming at it to scoop some of that out so it's not dropped as low as it is as it was. Let's see if we can't uh, inspire this thing to move in just a little more. Hmm. There we go. That seems like it's pretty good. Now let's pile all the crap that's in there out. I am absolutely okay with those nail holes. That's going to be just fine to me. This ought to uh, slide in nicely now. Yes. Yes, that's going to work well. Okay. And it's free spinning is all heck. That's a perfect. Okay. So now I just have to decide where in this do I really want this to sit. Do I want to set it way back here? Do I want to set it up here some? I like there, assuming it's in its fully neutral position right now. And we'll put a little silicon here. I might cut a little shim, knock that out, but... I had to get it in the hole, in the slot somehow, so that's normally, that's okay. That's an acceptable situation, I think. I guess I could have 
so I've shoved it down in there. Okay, noted if I ever did that again. So there's that. There's your truss rod. I think I like having I think I like having a visible a visual on it. So right there, I'm gonna put a little wedge or a little shimmy bit in here. In fact, we're gonna make it out of this right here, which is almost the perfect thickness already. Yeah, that's gonna work beautifully. We're gonna mark it real quick. I'm literally gonna just cut together a quick little wedge. We'll go right about there. Okay. We're gonna do this by hand, I think. We're gonna pop you out. So this is a little bit not flush, but I think I'll fill that. I'll be able to fill that in when I go to put the fretboard on. And then up here, you can just see the end of the access hole or of the, the nut, the part you put the wrench on to adjust it. Just barely fit, just barely poking through. See it there? It's when it homes down here, it's just barely popping, popping through there. And so I think we're good there. All right, I won't have to fix my vice jaw here though, because that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> 